Hey guys, welcome. I'm Brandon and I have been making tutorials and other game dev videos for over four years now. So if you are interested in getting started in game development, then this is the video for you. If you are brand new and you're just getting started, or maybe you haven't even started yet and you're kind of just thinking about it, then I know from personal experience just how overwhelming this process is. There's so much to learn. So with this video, I'm not just going to give you theory. I'm going to give you a full roadmap so that by the time you finish this video, you can close YouTube and you can actually go start making something. So with that being said, the first thing that you're going to want to do is pick a game engine. There are many, many game engines that you can choose from, but the big three right now are Unity, Unreal, and Godot. Now, what I would personally recommend for this is don't worry about the prices or anything like that right now. I'm going to touch on that in just a second anyways. But what I would recommend is to give each one of them a chance. Follow one simple, small, tiny tutorial, just enough to get your feet wet for each of them. No matter what anyone else online is going to tell you, the honest truth is there is no better engine between the three of them. All three of them are perfectly capable of high fidelity graphics. All three of them are perfectly capable of making small indie titles. They're all great. I personally use Unity, but I know people that use Godot and Unreal and they love them. There is no best game engine for everyone, but there will be a best game engine for you. That's why I say give each one of them a chance and just see which one clicks for you because one of them will. Unreal is slightly more capable in the super high fidelity 3D landscape, whereas Unity and Godot have slightly more tooling for 2D games. So maybe based on that, that will help you pick which one to start with. But again, they're all capable of anything. Okay, so for pricing, let's start with Unity. It is free to download and there is no engine functionality locked behind a paywall. And unless you are making over $200,000 a year with your games, it is free. If you cross that threshold, then you would have to upgrade to a pro subscription, which currently costs $2,200 a year, though that is going up, I think by 5% in the next coming weeks. So that's going up to 2310 per year. So they're on a subscription model. There's no royalties. A couple of years back, they had a lot of drama around the infamous runtime fee fiasco, but they killed that idea and got a new CEO in late 2024. So feel free to research that if you want to know anything more about it. But to give you the most up-to-date information, that has been killed. It's no longer a thing. Okay, with Unreal, it is also free to download. There are also no engine functionalities locked behind paywalls. And this engine remains free until your project crosses the million dollar threshold. It's not per year, it's per project. After sales for your project cross the million dollar threshold, then then you will start paying a 5% royalty on any additional sales, not on the initial million. So your first million for every project is free. And with Godot, it's easy, it's open source, so it's totally free. You'll never owe them anything. So no matter which engine you choose, you're not going to be paying anybody, anything, anytime soon. And chances are for most indie developers, you'll never owe any of them anything anyways. Now, the last thing I'll mention are the asset stores. Unity and Unreal both have really, really rich deep asset marketplaces. There is a lot of free stuff there, but obviously most of it is not free. It will never ever be required that you buy anything from there, but those options are there for you if there's just one thing that you want and you just want to buy it instead of program it yourself. Like if you want a parkour system, you can just type it in and browse through the options and read the reviews and buy it or not buy it. Now Godot does also have a built-in asset library, but compared to Unity and Unreal's massive marketplaces, it is a lot smaller. Okay, let's talk about programming because this is, for most of you, going to be the hardest thing to learn. But it is the most important because without code, you won't have a game. So if you choose Unity, you will most likely be learning the C Sharp programming language. If you choose Unreal, you will most likely be using Blueprints, which is their node-based visual programming solution. And if you choose Godot, you will most likely be learning GDScript, which is their own programming language. Now I say most likely for all three of them because there are other options. Unity also has a node-based visual programming solution. It just didn't take off in popularity like Unreal's did. For Unreal, you can program in C++ yourself if you want. And in Godot, they also support C Sharp, and I believe that they have plugins for visual programming solutions as well. Now, how you program is going to be a really big part of your preference to which game engine you like the best. I personally don't really like visual programming. Some people love it. Okay, now, before we go any further, I know that some of you are going to be tempted to try to 
to learn the programming language before you touch the game engine. Don't do that. I did that myself before I touched a game engine and it just really ended up being a big waste of my time. The most efficient way for you to use your time is to learn the game engine and your programming language at the same time. You can make a game with just two things, your engine and your programming. Now, when I learned game development, I did a whole mishmash of different courses and YouTube videos. So I know from personal experience that trying to structure that learning yourself, figuring out what tutorials you want to follow and what programming concepts you want to learn next, it can really be a nightmare. It's not an easy thing to do. And that is exactly why I have partnered with Zero to Mastery for this video. If you want to skip the guesswork, they have a dedicated become a game developer career path that is essentially a roadmap for everything that we've been talking about in this video. Instead of random disconnected tutorials, they start you off with a comprehensive Unity program where you build a full-scale 3D RPG with combat, quests, cinematics. You're going to learn the engine and the code by actually making a real game. Then they'll walk you through how to build Pong, Breakout, Space Invaders, Flappy Bird, and Asteroids, leveling up your skills each time. Once you've learned the code and the engine, it doesn't stop there. They actually teach you how to get hired in the industry, from fixing up your resume to acing job interviews. They even have really practical assignments, like applying for five jobs that you really want. You don't have to do it alone either. When you join, you get access to their Discord, which has over 500,000 students worldwide. You can find an accountability partner to keep you motivated, and they have TAs and teachers in there to help you when you get stuck. It is the kind of structure that I really wish that I had when I was first struggling to learn how to make games. If you use the coupon code FRIENDS10, then you'll get an additional 10% off. So if you are serious about pursuing a career in game development, then this is the perfect place to start. The link is in the description, so check it out after you finish this video. Now, some of you will be lucky enough to come into this with either 3D modeling skills or art skills. And if that is you, I am extremely jealous because that is going to help you. But if that's not you, then you're in the same boat that I was. And here is what I will say on that. At the beginning, art is not your number one priority. If it is absolutely non-negotiable for you to have to learn art, then fine. You can learn it in parallel to learning your engine and your programming language. But I do promise you, you're already going to find it to be enough work to learn how to code and how to navigate your game engine at the same time. So take it one step at a time. I would recommend starting with free art assets instead. You can get them for free on asset stores. You can grab them on opengameart.org. You can get packs on itch.io. You can get them all over the place. I get that when you're first learning, it's not fun to just make a little square run around the screen. You wanna actually have art and animations and all that stuff to make it feel like a real game but it doesn't have to be your art. It's certainly not at first. And for some developers, not ever. Now, when it comes to learning 3D modeling, the software you're gonna want is called Blender. It's free. And when it comes to learning Blender, that is a whole thing. Blender is a beast. So again, I would just recommend find 3D models that have already been made for you so that you can learn how to work with them and not necessarily have to learn how to make them right away. This whole thing is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're going to be building up and acquiring new skills all the time over time. I would actually give the exact same advice about music and sound effects as I do about art and 3D modeling. I have purchased thousands upon thousands of professional grade sound effects in asset packs. Same with music, it's not hard to find this stuff, but you can also grab lots for free. I'll actually drop a few links down below in the description for where you can grab free sound effects. Even if that's not necessarily what you want for your final product, that's understandable, I get it, but at least you'll have something to work with in the meantime. Because again, we're just learning here. Trust me, you do not want to try to learn how to code and learn your engine and learn how to do art and learn how to make sound effects and music all at the same time. That just can't be done, I don't think. Music and creating sound effects, that is a skill for either down the road or for a partner or someone you pay or for just asset packs. It is up to you. Now, when you start properly looking into game development, there are going to be certain exponential difficulty curves that you're gonna come up against. You might be following some really simple tutorial and get something working on screen and it feels really good, it's cool, and then you learn about shaders or particle systems or custom editor scripting or compute shaders, and the list goes on and on. Each one of those things is a whole thing, a whole system that you have to learn. That is why my operating word for learning game development is overwhelming. It can and will at the beginning feel like your list of things to learn is never ending. Now, to encourage you and to make you 
feel a little bit better. I do want to say that some of those things that you encounter, you will never need them. You may want to learn them because the more that you know, the more creative power that you have. But again, this video is about learning game development. These are not right now problems. And again, with certain assets, some of these things you might never need to know how to do yourself. Okay, now, it is a little bit tough to talk about game development these days without at least touching on AI. Some of you love it, some of you hate it, and some of you are probably on the fence. But it needs to be talked about because it cannot be avoided right now. Now, with game development, there are two very specific ways that you can use AI. You can use it to generate art, animations, 3D models, sound effects, music. So obviously you can generate actual assets for your game using AI. And it's tempting because you just do a quick prompt and it pops something out that you can just put into your game engine. It's so easy. But for any kind of generative art from AI, there does seem to be a lot of negativity from players around that right now. And you do have to disclose your use of AI when you publish a game on Steam these days. So obviously it's gonna be your decision, but just be mindful of that. So that's the first way is generating actual assets assets for you. The other side is using AI to help you with your code. I personally feel that it is a mistake to not utilize AI to help you with your code. Rapid prototyping, creating custom shaders for you, especially if you don't know shader code, debugging. AI is extremely helpful in all of these areas and it can and it will save you time and headaches. But this is a video about learning and starting game development. So what I would say for you actually learning game development, sure, use AI to ask questions and help you learn. But there is a certain level of programming competency that you should have before you really get into the weeds with anything with an AI agent. They still hallucinate and spit out code that doesn't actually exist. And if you don't know what you're doing, then you're kind of stuck at that point. So on this side of the fence, they are there. They're a tool to help you be better. But because of how powerful and how easy they are to use, it's really easy easy to start using them as a crutch, which is not what you want. It's going to make it really hard for you to learn yourself if you're using AI as a crutch. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so what are your next steps? You've tried all three engines and you've chosen your favorite. Now it is time to get on YouTube and start watching some tutorials. You need to get comfortable doing just some basic things in your engine. And you won't be making any kind of game in your engine without learning programming as well. So you'll be doing both. Now, once you have reached some small level of comfort in your engine, at that point, you wanna try to make something small on your own. And if you get stuck, even if it's every single step of the way, that's fine. That's actually great. Every single time that you you get stuck and you want to put your head through a wall, that is the kind of thing where you jump on Google, you go on Reddit or whatever website that you use, you research and you figure out the problem. Now you will remember that solution, I promise you. It will stick in your brain so much better that way than if AI just spoon feeds you the answer. So again, that is why we want to be mindful of how we use AI, especially in the early days when you're first learning. If you're not sure what to make, I always recommend either trying to create Pong or trying to create Flappy Bird. And I know, I know you got into this because you have really, really awesome games that you want to make. You don't want to make small, old ancient games. The harsh truth is you can't yet. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just being honest. You have to build up the skills first. There are certain level up moments that you will have while learning game development. You'll notice that in the comments section of some very, very basic tutorials, someone in there will be complaining about how the person is teaching bad coding habits. I wouldn't worry about that at the beginning. It's hard to understand why you might need to improve your coding architecture if you've never felt the pain of spaghetti, messy code in the first place. If you've never been there, then some of the more advanced coding techniques you're gonna learn are gonna seem needlessly complicated and you just won't get it. So simple for you at the beginning is best. You can and you will level up over time. That is just kind of the natural way that this journey seems to go. And when you've built up some small level of skill and you feel like you're ready, I would highly recommend participating in game jams. Game jams are really fun competitions where you compete to make a really small game in a short amount of time, usually 48 hours to a week. You will level up a lot by participating in these. And you'll also meet other developers and get really critical feedback, which is super important. And that is all I got, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.